Hi, this is Mary, and I have a student who's working on the essence of the swan. It is um, arranged by Balfour Knight and Angie Bemis. There are patterns that can help you to remember how to play the song. First thing that, and I have a student that's working on this, so she only takes lessons every couple of weeks, every two, three weeks, so I'm making this to help her out during those two, three weeks that I don't see her. So the beginning is a four measure intro. And what I suggested to her was to um, get the left, once the left hand is done here, just gracefully bring it up and station it or hover it over these two notes so that you're not searching for it. That's one thing I notice in a lot of harpists. Um, it, it seems like they're not, not really sure what to do with the left hand. They wait till the last minute to figure out what to do, where it's better to um, know well in advance where the left hand should be on the strings and what notes to hover over. in three so as an introduction it's in three maybe put a little bit of an accent on the first beat so that uh, it assures us that uh, uh, the of the of the meter and then starting at measure five there's a real cool thing this is arranged so well there's a lot of first inversion chords. Measure five has a first inversion C chord. Measure six has a first inversion A minor chord. And measure uh, seven has a first inversion D minor chord. So it's just nice to know that your hand can be in this shape. Um, you know, you, you don't want to hold these two fingers in, but these two fingers are playing thirds and then these are playing fourths. So it's just nice to kind of anchor on to that. And then another thing that um, I noticed my students uh, needed a little help with was these bass notes, because it just kind of looked like she wasn't sure where they were. So I'm just gonna say, play the first bass note, oops. supposed to be because you know you play that first chord that first bass note and the next one is not anywhere up here the next one is right here so you want to stay close to that and the third bass note the, the, the first beat of the third beat of that measure is way is back down on the C so the left hand is quite low in that area. Another thing that you could do is the chord names are written in, so you could go C major chord, A minor 7 chord with an E in the bass, D minor 7 chord with a C in the bass, D minor chord, oh, D minor in the left hand. And then in measure 9, I would like to change the fingering. I believe it says four on that B, which is our eighth note run up to a top E. Um, I'm going to say use your third finger and go three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two. I think that uh, gives your thumb an easier uh, way to reach the, the climax of that scale passage. The climax of that passage is that note up there. You want to be ready for it. So puts you ready for it. Your second finger is there, your thumb can grab that. Now, this is not a first inversion chord, this is a second inversion chord. So you could you could circle that and, and certainly put a little reminder. Now the other thing about uh, this um, passage here in measure 11, um, the left hand indicates that it should play four notes. Um, grab that E with your right fourth finger because all it is is a C arpeggio up and down and it's just so much easier to grab three notes in the left hand and four notes in the left hand and what you play on the way up you replace and you play on the way down. Now I'm not saying to not play those notes in the left hand but as a practice um, make sure that the most important note is that first bass note. Certainly, when you get more comfortable at, oops. Now this is brilliant. Your 
this is where you would expect all those chromatic notes. This is brilliant. It's very simple. And once again here, I'm going to recommend uh, to start on the third finger because it's the exact same passage as you just played, that ascending eighth note. There are one, two, four, six, eight. Eight eighth notes going up to this C chord in the second inversion. So this is a measure, mm, I can't even read this, 17 and 18? 14, 15, yeah, measure 17 and 18. So, uh... got some very lovely uh, superimposed thirds. Here's superimposed thirds are, are like embellished seventh chords. You just stack thirds on top of each other and they're pretty easy to play on the harp. They're a little bit harder on the piano because you have to stretch your hand a little more, but on the harp they're pretty easy and they're lovely. Once again we have a first inversion A minor chord and now we have a first inversion Ah. Okay, then I'm going to skip over to measure 28. Um, if in measure 28 you get a little bit flustered, you lose your place, um, I'm going to recommend, okay, this is what is written in measure 28. So that's, these are uh, big reaches in the left hand. And I'm not saying you should change the, um, the arrangement. What I am saying though is if you happen to get flustered in that area, play, you can just double the right hand. And that works just fine. Of course, try to play what's written, but if you, if you get to that point and you're like, okay, you can, you can just take the easy way out on that one. Measure 35, same thing. Um, left hand is. Oops. You can just double that. And then the last four measures of the arrangement are the same as the first four measures introduction at the beginning, introduction at the end. Get that left hand. So I hope those little tips may help you, and I hope they help my student too. Thanks.